I'm doing another Twitty Outdoors video. Um, I'm not exactly outdoors at the moment, am I? I'm in an enclosed Lake Victorian bit of ironmongery. This is um, Leadenhall Market. Uh, and uh, it's the first port of call on an afternoon pub crawl. Let me uh, take you around here for a moment to show you this wonderful juxtaposition of uh, architecture. Over here, just off the screen to my right, uh, we have the Lloyds of London building at uh, Rogers, Richard Rogers handiwork, uh, he of the Pompidou Centre. Um, were we discussing this in the comments the other day? There's that great anecdote about, I, I forget the guy's name, but uh, a Parisian who every day would dine in the Pompidou Centre uh, for the sole reason that it was the only place in Paris where he couldn't see the Pompidou Centre. Uh, but yes, similar sort of style, put all the crap on the outside. That was the, uh, the basic design principle of a uh, wonderful bit of archaeological, archaeological? Uh, architectural insight there. Rogers. But what I like about it is the way that it's sort of, um, it's nestled cheek by jowl with, uh, with Leadenhall Market. So you have this, uh, this sort of space age, or at least how we imagine the space age was going to be, a bit of uh, 1980s, is it? Futuristic architecture. And then back into the warm, comforting glow of some Victorian ironmongery. And a pub, which is where we're going now. of Leadenhall, possibly Leather Hall, um, although that's disputed, I believe. Uh, and there's been a market on this site since about the, uh, the 14th century. Uh, and this would have been the, uh, the, the, the absolute center of Roman London. So there probably could have been some sort of similar activity dating even further back than that. Current structure, late Victorian, 1880s. Uh, same architect who designed uh, Smithfield's market as well, which uh, is looking a bit sad these days. But, um, this, I'm happy to say, is still very well maintained in, uh, in fine form. In its uh, Victorian heyday, uh, a meat market, um, sort of, this would have been lined with, with butcher's shops. And you may recognise it from one of the Harry Potter movies. I think it was the very first, was it? Did they, 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 they use this as a sort of location for Diagon Alley, something like that. Um, and a bit more recently, was it more recently? One of Terry Gilliam's films, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. I think they set up shop here for a bit. Did some um, characteristically crazy Terry Gilliam type stuff here. Um, anyway, um, enough babbling. I'm going to get on and uh, enjoy this pint. Cheers. What is it with a little metal bucket of chips? Well, the burger was every bit as overpriced and underwhelming as you'd imagine it to be for a um, pub in London's financial district. But um, I, I'm quite fond of that spot. Uh, beautiful to be able to sit out in the, uh, the arches of Leadenhall Market enjoying a pint. So anyway, onwards to pub number two. Part of the uh, ongoing sadness of living in London is the constant reminder of pubs that are no longer with us. And they often survive in the, uh, the names of these little alleyways and yards. This is Bell Inn Yard. Uh, presumably, once upon a time, there was a pub here called the Bell Inn. And indeed, there's a plaque back there that says, once upon a time, there was a pub called the Cross Keys as well. Also long since gone. Um, the latter, I believe, a victim of the Great Fire of London. But hopefully, if this alleyway leads where I think it does, we can uh, find a still surviving pub of some historic interest. That's, that's not the way we're going, but just look at that for a... <laughs> this, this has a name, this, this corridor, Bengal Court. We are of course headed to the Jamaica White House. Nice to see him. 
pub with its partitions still intact. This was uh, London's first coffee house, it opened in 1652. A uh, very um, exotic sounding proprietor, Pasquale, Pasquale Rose, uh, who I think came from what is now modern uh, Croatia. Uh, and um, Peeps was here in the 1660s. And it eventually became a pub rather than that. When the, uh, the fad for coffee died down, um, you know, these things come and go, of course, in London. It's a real sort of nest of pubs. Perhaps that's turned into more of a restaurant. It's a Sam Smith's place, but it, it describes itself as the Georgian vulture chocolate house. Um, sad here, however, the um, Simpsons Tavern, this was quite an institution and uh, alas is no longer with us. Not to be confused with Simpsons in the Strand. This was a sort of city institution. Another chop house. <laughs> I always like to say it in the style of uh, Blackadder. Like, uh, what was that pie house? I don't know, Mrs. Miggins Pie Shop. Um, this uh, was only ever open weekday, I think only lunch times as well, but uh, uh, you know, you can imagine the hustle and bustle of city workers here and the kind of uh, smell of grilled meat and so on. Uh, great place, sadly no longer with us. Bit of a walk to the next pub, we have behind me uh, there at the Royal Exchange. Just about to see the uh, style of pillars are they, uh, Collins. Um, Corinthian. We'll go with Corinthian, that'll do. Apparently the reason that classical Greek architecture is often used for banks and financial institutions is to give a sense of sort of egalitarianism. <laughs> We're all in this together! <laughs> Just like not hugely convincing these days, is it? <laughs> This is the old Dr. Butler's head. Haven't been here for quite a long time. Maybe, um, could be 20 years. Old, uh, old friend Kev, uh, if you're out there, Kev, uh, we'd love to hear from you again. Um, used to come into London with, uh, we lived outside of London at that time, and used to come to London for pub calls. Um, I think this was on one of those routes. Uh, it is named for Dr. William Butler, who I think was the court physician to King James I, and was uh, famed for inventing, uh, what's it called, Dr. Butler's purging ale, which is a very strong laxative, so that's good to know. listing says that most of the uh, current building is probably 19th century but there are potentially uh, 17th century origins to this maybe uh, yet another pub that burned down the great fire and was rebuilt soon after quite possibly several times I would have to say as um, pub crawl pub tour videos go um, <laughs> I'm not sure thus far I can actually heartily recommend the uh, City of London as a destination um, there are some nice, interesting historic pubs, but uh, the, uh, the beer selection thus far has been pretty bleak. Uh, Start off with a Young's pub, never really been a fan of Young's beer, um, and then two Shepherd Neem pubs, and um, again, sort of struggling to find much joy in that first pint of Master Grill, whatever you call it, it's pretty. Um, so at the second, I veered clear of that and uh, instead got absolutely fleeced for a pint of lagery beer. It is the city of London after all. <laughs> you, you have been warned. <laughs> Prudent passage. Mm. Ye old Watling. Cheers, finally some um, actually decent beer on the, uh, the bar or at least a um, promise of some decent beer. They had um, Harvey's and Timothy Taylor's Landlord. Always a little bit apprehensive about Harvey's outside of Sussex. For some reason it doesn't seem to travel very well, but um, 
Compared to everything else I've had today, that is actually spectacular. Um, great, cheers. So we are on the bit of Watling Street that runs through the city of London. If I suppose if you around that way, you could probably just about see the, the sign up there to prove it. Uh, and um, Watling Street is uh, it's an interesting piece, isn't it? It runs all the way from, um, some say Dover, to, to Roxeter. Um, I suspect really the start is, is Canterbury, uh, um, based on Hilaire Belloc's writing in uh, the old road about uh, what, uh, what Canterbury actually means as a, as a port. Uh, effectively, you know, given the sort of vagaries of the tide back then, ships wouldn't be able to guarantee that they'd be able to put in at any one specific uh, port around Canterbury. So Canterbury was the real sort of trading centre, the real port of that area and sometimes you'd put in at Dover, sometimes you'd put in at Folkestone, um, uh, depending on what the, uh, the tide was doing on the day. But ultimately the, the trading post was then Canterbury. So, you know, I would argue that the real starting point of Watling Street is Canterbury. Uh, the end is an odd one, isn't it? It goes to, to Roxeter, uh, sort of the more or less the English-Welsh border. Um, quite why it ended there, I don't know. Uh, but it, presumably, you know, this is a road that had different identities over a period of, uh, of many centuries. And I think that, you know, the, the route pre-existed Roman Britain. And they probably uh, paved it over and made it a bit more formal. But um, um, th there was certainly some semblance of that route long before then. So, you know, perhaps for the Romans, Roxeter was a meaningful endpoint. But for the people of Iron Age, or possibly Bronze Age Britain, um, it, it, was, uh, it was destined for some other endpoint along the way, we don't know. St Paul's Cathedral, as we know, uh, built by Sir Christopher Wren, who started the Great Fire of London in order to get all of those sweet church building contracts. And this, of course, was the real money spinner for Chris. Corinthian columns, once again. There we go. The poles of um, the wonderful background sound effects from the street sweeper. Thank you, London. Just taking a brief detour here. This is uh, we're next to St Paul's Cathedral. It's just you know through the uh, the archway there. But this um, this archway is Temple Bar, which was actually transplanted from uh, Hoban, I believe, uh, and I think is related to you know the temple, as in inner temple, middle temple, middle temple, all of those. Um, inns of court at, uh, at Hoban and um, somehow moved brick by brick here to uh, the, the courtyard next to St Paul's when it was deemed that this was too small for traffic to pass through. I think this would originally have been on, either on High Hoban or on the Strand, or the, anyway, the gateway to the City of London there. And you can see the, uh, you know, the, uh, the the, the dragons either side that mark the gatepost still today there. So this is the uh, the cockpit, uh, which may well be the uh, the final pub of today's itinerary. We're, we're approaching the kind of the edge of the city of London now, not far from St Paul's Cathedral where we were just now, uh, and. Um, uh, you know, the inside, you could hopefully see that sort of uh, kind of galleried interior, and um, I, you know, I think presumably that's either the original or sort of reconstruction of this sort of setup for uh, for watching cockfighting, uh, which is um, you know it's a bit gruesome, um, very pleasant, affable sort of a pub today. But once upon a time, this would have been um, a hotbed of violence, animal on animal violence. Um, so um, yeah. I, interesting etymologically that um, the word cockpit as a sort of you know a, a space for for cockfighting to happen there may actually be some route in the modern usage of cockpit as in the uh, the, the place from which an air aircraft is is controlled never quite understood how we got from one of those to the other uh, really I should look into that um, and it's probably disputed like all these etymologies are but um, yes but there you go I think this is a very characterful pub um, and I haven't been here as well for quite a long time probably at least 10 years uh, but it's still uh, retained its charm and uh, decent beer selection I'm having Timothy Taylor landlord um, just to break it up a bit but um, yeah anyway great pub 
there we go, the cockpit. I think a very nice example of a, of a corner pub. Boozer. Oh, that's zero risk of turning into a gastro bowl. Well, perhaps I uh, shouldn't tempt fate, but uh, definitely not veering into the much hated gastro pub territory. Okay, well that's it then. I'm at, um, where are we now? Blackfriars. The uh, end of the pub tour. Um, I try to stay within the bounds of the city of London there, uh, but it's been a while, like I said, since I explored that area. Maybe I missed some pubs that might have been better uh, than the five that I went to there. Uh, you let me know in the comments. Uh, we'll figure it out. But um, anyway, um, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.